right behind me. If you recall, I had ordered some lobster claw plants and uh, they did come in. We did get those planted in these pots behind us. Um, we're gonna leave them out here till they start to actively grow and then we'll move them over where we think we need them. I need to research them. Some pit doesn't think there's gonna be enough light for them in there, but she's not familiar with that plant. So we'll do some research. I have seen them growing, growing in heavy shaded areas. So personally, I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but I've been wrong about a lot of things when it comes to these plants and fish. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll accept that and life will go on. Um, she picked up a few more flowers. I don't know which ones are which. So she's getting this thing all filled up back here. We did start using some of that coconut husk stuff to kind of landscape this stuff. I don't think it's gonna work out very well myself but we'll try it if that's what she wants to do here's the fish pot we put out front we did uh, get some more plants as you saw uh, this is strictly pond water and pond water only because i was concerned that maybe my well water didn't have enough nutrients for the plants or whatnot i did move one of those nifty looking little plants i bought recently with all the little leaves at the top Moved it from the other pot over here. It was nearly dead when I moved it. It finished dying, so I don't know if it was salvageable or not, but it did. It's still in there. Part of it's green, but all the leaf part that was up here is gone. This black guppy right here with a white tail. Never seen one before, but um, in that last video, the old, when we bought this, the old lady gave me a bag of fish. That's one of the fish that was in there. In fact, that entire bag went in here, and I think there's 20 fish in here. Most of them are little tiny ones, but yeah. Um, I was concerned they weren't getting enough oxygen in the water, so I just put this pump in there a couple hours ago because they were all right at the top all the time I walk over here. They were right at the top like they were gasping for air. This is the first time I've come over here, and that black one's been at the top, and no, oh, there's one guppy running around over there. This black one normally runs from me. Right across from the fishing supply store, Sompit noticed a place that sells pots. And if you just happen to look down the little path that they have, Next to their store, you can see behind it, there's a bunch of pots stacked back there. So she happened to notice it, we went in there. They do have these exact same pots and they're actually 20 baht cheaper there than, than where I got this. Because I was thinking about getting another one to put over here if this one works out. Um, so we'll be back there. They also, that plant I was just talking about with all the multiple leaves and the yellow flower that pops out of it, they also have those there. And she has a bunch of water lilies for 80 baht for a pot of them. So I'm gonna go back and get one of those and get that in here right away and see if we can't get it going. Uh, this here we picked up from the fishing supply store. She had a pot out front, had a bunch of this in it. So I told Sampit to ask her where she got it, knowing full well she'd probably just give me some and she did. So we threw that in here, we'll see how that goes. I did do a pH test on this water. The water in the other one, it's mostly been in there the whole time and I just keep adding to it. I stopped adding well water, started adding pond water. This straight out of the pond yesterday, both pH right at 8.2. I'm thinking that's a little bit high. I don't know what else to try with these plants. Maybe maybe the soil just needs to, I don't know, because these pots, I'm bringing these pots home, the, the soil they have. If I get a pot with a plant in it, like I did those ones with the, the multiple little leaves with the yellow flower, I take that same pot that she gave me at the store and put it right in there. So I don't think it's the soils the problem. It's, it's either nutrients, sunlight, or the environment, meaning the pH, I think. So I'm gonna address those, see what we can do to figure that out. Life goes on. Cruise control, we talked about that in the last video. We have a appointment Tuesday morning. Tomorrow is Monday, it is a holiday. I don't remember which one it is, but it's a holiday tomorrow. So Tuesday morning we we're scheduled to be in there at I think it is 10 o'clock or something. Snakes, had another big snake out here the other night. I think it's the same rat snake I've been seeing all along. I think I figured out what's happening. I think he's coming up in the lawn here to get these little frogs out of the swimming hole. And then when this floods from rain, when this rainwater sets in here, this thing will get full of little frogs. I don't know where they're coming in from the, the rice field or out of this pond, but the last time I seen the snake go across, I went and looked on the camera and he came from right over here. And at the time this was full of water in here. 
So I think he's probably up in here hunting frogs. Uh, yesterday on the way back from town, uh, mom had a water fitting leaking at the house. So I went in there and fixed it. And I brought the motorbike back to grab some parts. There was a big snake across the road over there. I think it was a rat snake as well. I don't believe I've seen any cobras here yet. I would imagine once we uh, get enough plant growth here and get enough wildlife coming through here, that there becomes a food supply for them. They'll move in here and start feeding. We'll just have to keep an eye out for them. I see one of my fig trees has died. I told Sompit I might pull these completely out, put something else in here. After I researched them a little more, I don't know if they're gonna get the size that I'm looking for. Boy, the spider webs, crazy here. Every morning I walk out and I wander around with a broom in the air, look this, all over the patio, knocking all the spider webs down. Anyhow, I think I'm gonna switch these out. I just don't know what I'm gonna switch them out to yet. If she wants to save these and put them somewhere else, we will. I mean, this looks like new growth, these leaves here. I haven't really paid much attention to them. That piece up there and then right here on the top of this one, you can see it's nice new green leaves. This one has one or two. This is the one I said died. I'm not sure why. Treated and handled the same way as the rest of them. This one looks like it's got no new activity at all on it. But as you can tell, those three down there have some new growth. But I just don't think they're going to open up and provide the shade that I'm looking for on this side of the house. Um, Some pit did mention the other day, she asked me, she said, well, where are we going on our next trip? So I'm like, all right, she finally wants to go again. Um, so I've got something in mind. I'm not going to talk about it yet because I don't know if we're going to do it. But um, yeah, we'll start looking into that and come up with some kind of timeline. The other thing I have delivering today, I have a plant light arriving a small round one i think it's 100 watts i'm going to figure out a way to hang it right down over top of this um, to see if there's a deficiency here sooner or later i'll figure it out okay in that last video i said i was going to make a box to put around here uh it is monday it's a holiday today but I think our nursery's open, so we're going to run into there, and I'm going to get a lily to put in that front pot. And then when I get back, I'm going to plan out this stand for this pot, uh, bucket. I want to get it inside something to just kind of cover it up so it looks a little nicer. And then we will, uh, on that stand, however I end up doing it, I will put an arm or something out over there to hang this light. This is actually a grow light. And I'll hang that over top of here to give these plants some sunlight, so to speak. And I'll just run that a couple, three hours a day just to kind of give them some light and see if that helps these plants. When it cools off a little later on this afternoon, I'll pull the steel, the welder, and the cutter out and start building that stand for that thing. I did get the larger fittings ordered for here to go to a one inch pipe on this overflow so I can increase the flow volume through there. When I build this stand, I'll raise this up a little bit too so this, so this pipe isn't down and it is, isn't angled down and hit it back there. None of these are glued up here. In fact, you can see I don't even have a fitting on that hose there. That's how low a pressure it is. But we'll go over this in a little more detail when I actually get the stand over here and, and get going with that. I do not know what I'm going to cover the stand with yet. I haven't figured it out. I'm just kind of winging it right now. I'll just make basically make a steel square frame with a platform it, set the bucket on, and that's it for now. I'll figure out the rest of it later. If I need to go back and put mesh or something on the sides later on, I will. I do plan on leaving one side of it open so that these pipes and shit will face back toward the wall and just come around the side and feed in and out of there. But that way you can't see these. It'll just be a square box sitting out here. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. We're going to head into town now and grab us some water lilies. 80 baht per lily. Main roundabout right there. The nursery is about over top of that silver pickup, clear down there. About the last thing you can see around that corner. So it's probably 500 meters. Um, some pit stopped here to get some noodles to go. So we got this climbing post here. Two, four, six bags of, seven bags of potting soil. A lily, a brick of hashish, and a bag of rocks. Oh wait, maybe that's not hash. 
It might be clay. For 277 baht. But she's going to grab some noodles and we're going to go home. It is right at midday right now. And again, today's a holiday, so a lot of the stores are closed. I'm going to say probably 50% of them. Man, maybe not even that. They're closed. This is our main market street right here. Comes all the way down to the end. And our once a week nightly market's right there. Looks like he's getting ready to set up. I thought that was on Tuesday nights or Wednesday nights, something. All right, we'll see you in paradise. Tuesday morning in paradise. Today we have to take the Isuzu over so they can take a look at that cruise control. Um, I'm out in the backyard. Uh, just give you an update on the durian. Ming, ming, ming. They all look pretty good still. Um, we are going to get more dirt and hump up around these because people are saying that, oh, if you don't do that, they're going to die off uh, too much water or whatever. We are moving into the dry season, so I'm not real worried about it right at the moment. Um, but we will get, get them moved up a little bit and get some more dirt around them just to keep the water pushed back away from them. Um, for next year's rainy season, but like I said, they they look pretty good so far. So good there. Um, I did mention in the video the other day I had one of these fig trees die. I don't think these are going to do what I thought they were going to do once I got to really research them. I don't think they're going to get big enough to cast the shade onto the house that I was hoping for. Um, so I think I'm probably going to replace these things. Yeah, I think I might just pull these out, get rid of them, and put something else in there. I just don't know what yet. I haven't researched, but I want something that will kind of come up and fill out enough. And they're going to have to be fairly tall in order to cast shade on this wall of the house. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do yet. They're going to have to be at least probably 40-foot trees, I'm guessing. Because this house is, what, 15? 12? 12. So we're probably going to need at least 30-foot trees. Because the sun in the, in the hottest part of the year is like right up here. So they're going to have to be fairly tall to get any shade over onto the house. Uh, the other thing, yesterday we went to the nursery, as you saw. We picked up the lily. Got it in here. I did put the bubbler in here because I don't know if I mentioned it, but it looked like the fish were kind of gasping for air because they were all at the top cruising around all day long um, before I put the plants in. So I... Uh, Put the bubbler in there before we got the lily. Put the lily in, put the bubbler back in there. Um, I think the water's actually clearing up some. There's a flower right here. Hopefully we'll get to see that before the plant dies because you know how I am with water plants. They tend to not live for me. Although I will say this one's looking pretty decent. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll be okay, I don't know. I hope so. I am putting the fertilizer in there. We got it out here where it gets some direct sunlight as you can see every morning. Um, it's only been in there a day, so we'll just wait and see what happens. It was 80 bots, so what is that, like 275, 280? Cheap investment just to test the water, so to speak. We are putting the aquatic fertilizer plant food in there. I put, I think, one time, um, and I'm just going to put that one like every four days because it is a smaller amount of water than the other pot, and then I'll do that one every other day. So every other time I do that one, I'll do this one. Yeah, it's all dirty. My brand-new car is all dirty. And it isn't even from this road. Um, we took it somewhere and I don't remember where it was. I remember we had uh, some pit sister in there. She got sand all over the back floorboard. I do remember that. We uh, went through our first tank of propane. Uh, finished it out yesterday. Have the spare one under there. So I just put that in there, brought this out here. When I get a minute, I'll take it in. And they said we can either exchange it or we can just drop it off and they'll have it filled. We can pick this new tank back up. Doesn't really matter to me. It sits under the counter. As long as it doesn't leak, that's the only thing I care about. Uh, some pit's eaten. She gets done there. We're going to take off in about 30 minutes, take the Isuzu over there. Um, they did tell us that if they have to keep it, they will give us a ride home, which is great because it's like 40 kilometers over there. So they'll have to either bring it back or come and get us also. Another beautiful morning in paradise. Overcast, so it's nice and cool. Light breeze, so... Life is good. Um, took the Isuzu in, cruise control. Let me just say right up front, they didn't change anything. It's still doing what it did before. So we had it in there a couple weeks ago to pick up that gold or whatever we were doing there. We asked them about it, told them what it was doing. They ran in the back 
room where the shop is. They come back out and said, oh, it shouldn't be doing that. Bring it in. So we brought it in. They took it in the back. They come out about 20 minutes later and said, oh, well, the Elegant doesn't have the resume feature on it. I'm like, well, mine does. Oh, no, it doesn't. They walked me over to the one sitting in the showroom. And it's a 1.9, so maybe that's the difference. But they walked over there and showed me the buttons. There is no resume button in the one sitting in the showroom. And they said, see, no resume. I said, let's go look at mine. Walked out. It's locked right now, or I'd show you. But walked out. Oh, mechanic calls the mechanic over, comes over, looks at it, and then they start talking. And then uh, explained to him what it was doing. He said, well, take me for a drive and show me. So I went out and I did what I did in the video, the last video. Uh, slow down, speed back up, it resumes. Stop, go, it won't resume. He watched me do it three or four times and he said, well, let me drive. Okay, you drive. He gets in, he slows down, resumes, plays it on, off, on, off, da, 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 does all this stuff. And then he stops, takes his foot off the brake and hits resume from a dead standstill. Well, my experience with cruise controls, most of them won't function at all below a predetermined speed. United States, that's usually around 20 to 30 miles an hour. I wasn't sure on these because I hadn't tested it, but on the way home, I tested it. It won't do anything below 40 kilometers an hour. You can't set it, you can't resume, you can't do nothing. All you can do is turn it on and turn it off, the functionality. You can't run the cruise control, period. So he never did even try it the way that I was explaining it. I just finally just said, you know what, just forget it. He's like, oh, no, we'll just take you back. We got one up there. I'll show you that it doesn't, they all do that. And I said, well, you're telling me you're not going to fix it. That's all that matters. We're done talking. Get out of here. So we got in the car and left. Wasn't happy about it. I still think, and, and I told him, I said, that, that's silly to do that because you have the resume function in there already. All it is is software program, zero added cost to let it resume from a stop. After a stop, not from a stop, but after a stop. Oh my God, I just seen this. I've had a problem with all these tiny bugs lately. Oh my gosh. At night, we, and we come out in the mornings and they're just all over the ground and all over the vehicles. Look at this. That one over there is the same way. And I'll show you on top of these vehicles too. This is where I first noticed it. And, and they're, when you drive, they don't blow off because that pile of bugs was on the Isuzu when we took it to the dealer yesterday. So it's still stuck on there. And then there's, these are all bugs stuck on the house here too. Different webs and stuff. I went through and wiped them all down a couple of days ago. It is what it is. They're not going to fix it. They're not going to do anything with it. They did say that if you have the next grade up where it's got all the full safety systems, it will do that, which makes absolutely no sense to me, but whatever. Um, I said a while back I was going to make a stand for my filter over there. Uh, I got that done yesterday. I don't have the black paint, so I got to go to town and grab some black paint to cover up this grinding and welding and stuff. I thought I had some, but I think I used it all touching up the gates. So we'll go in this morning, get some black paint, get that touched up, and get that in place. And on that, I'm going to take another piece. Once I get it over there and get it in position, I'm going to take another piece of steel, figure out where to lay it on there to hang it off the side to hang my little uh, sun lamp off there to help those plants in that pot, see if that helps any. Speaking of plants and pots, uh, we bought that one for out front here and I put a lily in it two days ago, one that I bought and ta-da, today we got a flower on it already. And this is straight pond water if you remember from earlier in the video. But yeah, this thing, I seen it under the water yesterday, come out this morning, it was popped up, but it wasn't open, and now in just the last two hours, it opened up. So that looks nice. As long as my plant don't die, it still looks healthy, but we'll see. Like I said, it, it should be okay out here, though. I'll probably go get some more of those ones that died, the recent ones, the ones I thought were really cool. Probably go get another pot of those and put them in there. This lady in town where we got this lily, and they also have these pots, that new place we found, that last nursery we were at. Um, she has those 
plants, so we'll probably get some of them. What's strange though is these fish in here, I never see them up here hardly. When I first put it in there, they were up on top a lot. I put the bubbler in and they were up on top all the time. So I thought they were short on oxygen. So I put the bubbler in there. Now I don't see them. I feed them every day, but they're just hiding somewhere, I guess. Plants in by the door popped a couple flowers the other day. So let's go look at those real quick before we get off the camera. But here's the flower. She was just out here working on this. So this will go back in there. I don't know how much she had done when we looked at this this morning, but she got this in there. We need to get some more of that coconut. This is made from coconut husk. Uh, we need to get a few more bags of that. So maybe tomorrow morning we'll run into town and grab some of that. Said I was going to work on my stand today. Got the paint, got it painted out of the light bar to hang my grow light on. Um, I actually put it on here first because I thought I was going to have the stand back further. But... I got the pump kind of buried in the rocks down there. I didn't really want to dig around down in there moving it. So where the pump is located in the length of the hose, I've kind of got it out of ways. I will probably redo that later. But anyhow, I had this arm out here on the corner. It was kind of hanging out in the front. I didn't like that because I don't want to really block the view of the fish while I'm walking by. So I shoved that back. The water's really cloudy because I put a clay bar in there the other day. Um, someone said that the clay would help the balance the pH in the water. So what the hell, I'll try it. So I got that in there. Um, we'll see what happens. There's a snail right there. I noticed a couple of them. They must have come in on plants because I never put them in there. As you can see, these are fading fast. These smaller ones aren't doing real well. This is the only one that looks like it's worth a crap, and now it's got dirty water all over it. But uh, at least it's still green and live looking. Anyhow, that project's done for now. Um, I will get a longer piece of hose. I have to go to town and get one. I don't have any more that size. I got plenty of hose, just not that size. Quite a while back, I'd mentioned I wanted to put some solar lights out here. The village put in some solar lights. So I had a sump pit get a hold of the company that did that. And they come by today. I told them I wanted to do three of them, but they want 9,950 baht per pole. It's a it's concrete hole, uh, block in the ground, five meter pole with a 500 watt solar light on it. Um, I didn't want to spend 30,000 baht on light poles and lights. Um, I kind of was hoping for about 5,000 a piece on them, but I probably got the Farong price as soon as he come around the corner and seen the white guy standing in the driveway, he probably jacked the price up by two. Um, but I told him I thought it was too much so he got in the truck to leave and I said, well, can you put just one in? Because I do want one on this corner, as I said before. I want people to be able to see this corner so they don't get drunk and smash into my fence. At least the pole will slow them down a little bit. So he's going to come and put one in there. But I told Sampet when she calls him, tell him to put two in, put one there. And I'm going to put one over there by Wonky Wall right over top of the rice road and where that gate is. So when I start parking out there later on, if I'm coming in at night or going out at night, I got a light right over the gate, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, so we got two lights coming. He said he's got a job for 300 lights down here in this area. He's from Cantherlac. He said he's got a job for 300 lights down here somewhere um, near here. So we told him whenever he comes over to do that, just come out and do these at that time. Um, I did ask her to tell him to give me a one-day notice, though, so I could be here to make sure they put them where I want them and they're facing the direction I want them. Is I don't want them pointed toward the house at all. I want that one pointed out over the curve and the one out there out over the rice road. My lily opened up today. It's actually closing up now at night, but it's actually opened up nice today and it's closing back up for the evening, it looks like. Hoping this works out because it uh, looks pretty good. As I said before, I don't see the fish in there and there's probably 20 or 30 fish in there, but there are really small ones, most of them. But I'm sure they're okay. I did take the bubbler out. I had that bubbler in there for the last two days. I took that out because I don't plan on leaving it there. Mainly because I don't have power out there. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have put power here. I got one there, but I don't want to run a cord out here. But in reality, with that much foliage in there, it should give enough oxygen to keep the fish alive. Because I actually have these and I've got this in there. And I'll probably put, well, plus these. 
Some of these little ones will multiply eventually. Some other type right there. So it'll be over vegetated in probably a month if, if it doesn't die. Um, it's only been in there like three days now, so we'll see. Yeah, three days. Not much else to report this evening. Uh, we haven't harvested the bananas yet. Haven't seen any snakes today. So with that, we'll see you in the morning. It's another morning in paradise. I forgot to mention this the other day. I had ordered some door trim guard to put on here because someone said that the paint tends to wear off the door edge is what they said. And I wasn't sure if they were talking about here, like down here. So I put this on here. The other reason is door dings, bumping it against another car. I bought five meters out of China. Uh, <laughs> it gave me enough to do the MUX and two doors on the Toyota. I thought I'd do these two just because it's right here in proximity to the MUX. So if this gets swung open or the wind catches it or something, it won't damage it too bad. Um, when I get a minute, I will order another roll of it. They sell them in, I think, one meter rolls, two and two meter, one meter, two meter, five meter, and 10 meter. I'll probably order a two meters and do the other side. Two meters will probably do it. Uh, it wasn't very expensive stuff. Pretty easy to put on. It's got a adhesive. It's like a U shape. It's got an adhesive inside with a piece of tape on it. Peel the tape off and just slip it on there. So we had a lot of questions about Mark's fish tank um, in the comments. I had a couple emails, so I told Mark and he agreed to sit down and answer some questions about that fish tank that we last looked at, um, the self-contained unit with all the filtering and stuff. We did that video and then I lost it somehow. Actually, I didn't lose it. it after about 30 seconds of recording, it stopped for some reason. I don't know if the battery died or what, but anyhow, we lost it. So he come back by and we redid the questions and answers portion about his fish tank. So here it is. Well, as you can see, we got Ozzy Mark here. Had a lot of questions about his fish tank that we had in that video a couple uh, videos back. So he's here to answer questions. First, where did you get it? So it comes from Chattachak Plaza, but in, in an area called the JJ uh, Fish JJ Fish Market, I think it's called. It's all in that whole Chattachak sort of area. If anyone knows sort of JJ Mall, it's very close to JJ Mall or mixed, M-I-X-T. You pretty much walk out of out of the shopping center there and, and walk along the road and here's all the fish places. Yeah. So it's a place in there. And I, I've given you the line contact details of, yep. of the guy concerned, so you'd be able to share that. And, and we'll post that right here in the video, so you might want to pause it, so you can scan that if you wish to. Um, but for the record, Cheddar Jack is in Bangkok, if anybody doesn't know. <laughs> um, so you got it there. Uh, did you have to order it? Did they have it in stock? But they had it in stock, and I, I first saw it about Christmas time last year. And, and really, with the house going on, you know, just wasn't quite sure. Um, and then when we got the other fish tanks in, uh, finally made the decision that yeah, I was looking for uh, looking to get a, a, another tank. And uh, I just sort of I had his contact details already, and so I just reached out to him again. Hey, you remember me? You know, met you Christmas yeah. time. Blah 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 blah. And so we went from there, got the quote, and so on and so forth. So is this the first time you dealt with him then? First time I dealt with him, and to be honest, uh, I've been very, very happy. Um, Aman Coco is his name, and he, uh, he's he been really good, really good. And uh, what size of tank was it? So it's a 525-litre tank, so it's one and a half metres long. Um, it's, I can't remember the height. The tank itself, I think, is 80 centimetres high, and then it's 50 centimetres deep. Okay, and I believe you said it included one light and you added one to it, is it, that correct? It's got three strip lights in it, and I replaced it with a programmable light so that I could simulate, uh, you know, dawn, uh, daylight, dusk, night time. Okay, so you're wondering what the noise is. It just started raining, so um, I think we'll be okay on the audio, though. These microphones are pretty good. Uh, was there anything else special about the tank that we talked about? No, nothing else apart from it. It's got an, uh, its own inbuilt sump filter, you which you showed on the on the video before. On, and if anyone's interested in those lights, it's a Hyger, H Y G G E R, H G nine five seven is the exact model. The one you added. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's and just like a four feet long, four feet long um, set of strip lights. 
that you can program when to come on, what intensity, what colour, et cetera, et cetera. I've been quite happy with it. Anything special about mounting it in there they'll need? It just sits on top of the glass. They're waterproof. Okay. Um, so the filter, was it, was it like a four-stage type filter? It's a three-stage right? filter. So it's a, um, um, what do you call it, a skimmer, right, at the top, and then the water drops down into a um, collection area. And from there it overflows into, oh, it is four stage, you're right. It then overflows into a filter area. From the filter area, it overflows into a, uh, a biological media area. From there, it then goes into the, the suction pump, which then pumps it back at, up into the tank. Okay. You said you had it delivered and they set it up, correct? Correct, correct. So part of the negotiation with them was that I just didn't want to buy a, a tank and then organize delivery myself and set up you know what had happened something would break and then be finger pointing about who did who to what and it yeah. was your fault anyway so i wanted i wanted aman and and his um his team to be able to uh deliver it and set it up so that i knew it was all okay no cracks nothing broken everything fine yeah and for those of you who don't know mark's 40 minutes east of here so he's what seven hours out of bangkok i'm about seven and, and a half, half yeah seven and a half yep. hours out of bangkok so they brought it all the way out here yep. and there was a fee for that there was so it was about eight thousand baht for delivery and another five thousand for um setup setup so you know yeah did i pay too much probably but for me it was like insurance right and uh you said you had to recruit a little bit of help for on-site delivery they needed a little bit of help just to be able to unload it from the truck to then get into the house so i just organized a uh, another two local guys uh you know like relations of goys and and um we were able to get it in no problem four people was no problem yeah. Is anything uh technical about it do you think we need to talk about in addition mm, to that nothing technical been very happy with the filter performance it's it's got the water crystal clear very very happy uh, i haven't got it fully loaded up with fish yet um, even when I do, I think it'll be fine. I've got some, some replacement filter material that I've got in some of my other filters that I'm very, very happy with. It's that PP30 stuff I was telling you mm -hmm. about. I'm going to put some of that in there. It's been really good. And you said you were going to add an under gravel filter to it? Is I'm going to run an under gravel filter. It just helps keep the, uh, the water quality um, a bit better and also will reduce the number of times I need to do a water change. Great. Um, and the big one is what it cost you. So all up, including that thirteen thousand for delivery and um, setup, was sixty one thousand. But as I said, you can buy a tank a whole lot cheaper. But I wanted a piece of furniture, right. so not just a bare tank. So right. it's all built in with the cabinet and everything built in. You don't see any. Nice, you don't yeah. see any pipes. It it just yeah. looks like a piece of furniture. It's not like my. <laughs> <laughs> my little stand over there. <laughs> the that's the agricultural version. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, with the field that counts. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Um, so, anything else about the contact information? Or anything about the pump? No. Um, as I said, uh, Aman I found was really good to deal with. Um, the only thing, probably, to let people know, if they do live remote, they'll be looking for a, like a typically a fifty percent deposit up front, yep. and then fifty percent on day of delivery. So you know, to load the truck on their end. <laughs> Pretty Basically. much, pretty much. So I'm pretty sure that they run these things on like a consignment, that they buy it in from others, or they, they have it there on consignment from others, and then when they sell one, they have to pay for it themselves, sure. I think. At this point, I, I think you've answered all the questions we've kind of talked about that you and I have talked about. So um, like I said, we have the QR, QR code there. I'll put the name of the store in the description down below. And I imagine Mark will monitor the, the comments for at least the first two days. So if you have a question for him, feel free to throw it in there. Yep. And if anyone's got my own contact details, just feel free to reach out to me as well. They'll, uh, okay. Yep, they'll find um, me. Like a line? Or what? Uh, line or email or whatever. Okay. So, yeah, happy to answer any questions. All right. And with that, I've tied up Mark enough. <laughs> I want to thank you again, Mark, for coming over and sharing that with us again. Not a problem. Um, but We'll probably throw it in a video again next time around once you get all the fish in it and get it all set up, completed. Sounds just good. so everybody can see a follow-up yep. on it. Yep, no problem. I already fed them, but they think I'm out here to feed them again already. Man, there's a lot of small tilapia in there. Harvest the bananas. Go get a go get a knife. We'll cut them down right now on camera. Go get a knife. We'll get it. Go get a knife. We'll cut them down. 
Mark and Book are coming over this afternoon. Book wants to do some fishing. I'm going to go into town this morning and get some chicken liver and see if I can find some cornmeal. I want to kind of make a paste to stick in those hooks I bought the other day and let him try those with those treble hooks, the three pronged hooks on the bottom. Um, I think it'd be pretty easy to snag a fish if it bites on there. They're the same as a green bean we have in the U.S. These are just called a long bean. And if you're going to grow some, I suggest growing these because they're easy to grow and you get a lot of beans quick. Uh, the reason I want to come out here originally was to check on our new bananas. As you can see, they are popping bananas. Number three is opening up as we speak. As you saw, we just ran into her. She's going to get a knife. She wants to harvest those bananas right there. Uh, it's Buddhist Lent tomorrow. She was hoping she could maybe try to get them ready by tomorrow, which they're not going to be yellow by tomorrow, but she was thinking maybe she could get rid of some tomorrow. Our sugar cane, I don't know when we harvest that or what we do with it. I see them in the markets where they just squeeze the juice out of them and make some kind of sugar juice or sugar drink. I don't know if we can try something like that with just use a poke poke smasher and use it as a roller to squeeze it out. I don't know. Here she comes. I'm going to get out here. Get ready. I talked about this, uh, what I call, I think, volunteer rice. The stuff they've been pulling, they got out here, a couple ladies out here yesterday pulling like crazy. You can see they got this whole end done. A few left there. Those of you that were around last year recall that um, about this time of year, all the rice started falling down. You can see it's starting to do that because it gets so tall when it gets heavy rain, the weight just lays it down in the field. Not a big deal because the tractors will pick it up when they go through and harvest. The other new event that we had out here that I didn't notice when I had the camera out here, but uh, did the other evening when Sumpit and I took a walk, is the neighbor planted bananas all the way down this road here for some reason. Doesn't matter to me. Our property ends right where those big leaves are sticking out there. Once again, we don't have any of that volunteer rice from last year. And I, like I said before, I think the difference is hand harvesting, machine harvesting. Because a lot of people won't machine harvest because of the yield loss on it. You want me to get it? You need the share? I don't think so. Oh my God. your hand. I know, but I'm going to, I'm going to whack it, drop the knife and grab it. So, well, maybe not. It's heavy as hell. Probably 50 pounds, I suppose. Look how big that is. So now we got to cut that tree down, right? Mm -hmm. Can I just lay this on the ground for now? It's getting that sticky shit. Are you staying here? Okay, we're going to cut these bunches off of here, and I think she wants to put them in the pot over there with that stuff I talked about before. Here's another set of those mm -hmm. twin bananas or whatever they call them, mutant bananas, yeah. Siamese bananas. Okay, well, I got a different plan. I think if you turn it over and start at the bottom, it's probably easier to get to that. Let me show you here. Hold this camera. I've never done this, but I'm just thinking. If we turn it this way, now you can get right to it. Turn it upside down, now we can get right to the piece instead of trying to get down through there hard part here is not cutting all the bananas when you're trying to cut. Last time I whacked a few little bananas. I don't like doing this because I'm cutting towards us, towards you. Oh, yeah, that bunch and then this bunch. Hold on.
this way. Oh. Oh. Got a hold of it? Okay, this is a good one. Well, figured it out now. And they're not so close together. Further up the branch we go. Should snap off there. And there we go. So I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's how we do it in paradise.